<coughs> Oops, let's close this. All right, welcome back. Let's continue. Let me just close uh, some stuff. No. Okay. Um, I opened here uh, the documentation in a different format. So this is the format that we've been using, and this is the format that I'd like to use because I n really need to see the entire uh, tree. Let me just show you how, how I get here. So this is the MSDN library. So we're going to Windows Development and Audio and Video and Direct Show. And in Direct Show, so I guess we're at using maybe. Let me see. It's difficult to tell. Audio Direct Show about data flow. Uh, so this is using right. That's where I want to really jump to as soon as possible to, for to more examples. So this is um, building or data flow. Where are we? We are in overview of data flow. So data flow, overview of data flow in direct show. Good. All right. Really, really fly through this, please. All right. So what do we got? So we have, um, so there is a notion of a media sample. A media sample is something, that's the thing that travels between filters. So the media sample is, there is a class media sample, but it exposes the iMedia sample interface, and it has a, po a pointer to a buffer, a byte array, and that is where the actual audio uh, signals are or the video pixels are. Alright, we'll ignore the allocator. The, al the allocator is, th is this thing that allocates media samples and here we have a good diagram. So if we have two filters, a decoder and a renderer and they have a pin connection between them, so the decoder has an al or this connection has an allocator every connection has an allocator to it so the decoder when it wants to give a sample to the render a decoder is a decompressor so when the decoder wants to give a sample a decompressed sample to the render for playback so it goes to the allocator invokes the get buffer method and gets a sample gets the sample fills it up with information and gives it to the vendor by invoking the renderer's pins receive method. They discussed it here somewhere. The renderer takes the buffer, the, the sample, and holds on to it. Here it's holding on to the media sample until it's time to play it. When it plays it, it no longer needs it, so it then then the receive method that has been invoked is returned. So basically the decoder, decoder's outgoing pin invokes the receiver's incoming pin's receive method and the parameter is the media sample. When the media sample mm, maybe the discuss anyway, when the media when the render is finished, so Basically, it releases the media sample. We'll come back to this. This is a more complex case. We don't need this right now. I really want to skip through as much as fast as possible to this material. Transports, samples, and allocators. This is a deeper discussion of what we just discussed. You can. Oh, th th this makes a little bit more sense because what, what it says here is that the filter. In calls the allocator, gets a media sample that has a memory buffer, and hands it over to and hands over the media sample to the filter, to the in to the receiving filter. The receiving filter, when it's finished, it invokes the allocator and gives back the sample. Right here is a good uh, discussion. Basically, what they say is that when the receiving filter is finished with the sample, it invokes the release method of the sample. Right, the sample is a com 
object, so it has a release method. So we inv so the receiving filter when it's finished with the sample, it invokes the release method, and the release method does not destroy the sample, but rather uh, puts it back in the allocator's pool. Very nice. Filter states. All right, I don't see anything important here. The pool model. Mm, not important. Event notification and direct show. Overview of event notification. I think we might have some code here. Retrieving events. Good, we have code. All right, this is good. So this is where I'd like to go back now to writing some more code. Right, and actually I'd like to go back to the overview of event notification and actually read a bit through this and then we'll go through hopefully two very important examples of the two methods by which we can uh, learn about right? learning when an event occurs. This is good stuff. All right, so overview of event notification. So a filter notifies the filter graph. A filter notifies the filter graph manager about an event by posting an event notification. The event could be something expected, such as such as the end of a stream, or it could represent an error, such as a failure to render a stream. The filter graph manager handles some filter events by itself and it leaves others for the application to handle. If the filter graph manager does not handle the, uh, a filter event, it places the event notification into a queue. The filter graph can also queue its own event notifications for the application. So the filter graph can also place messages, events in, the, in this queue for the application and it can also take events from a filter and hand it over to the queue to the application. An application retrieves events from the queue and responds to them based on the type of event. Event notification and direct show is therefore similar to the Microsoft Windows message queuing scheme. An application can also cancel the filter graph manager's default behavior for a given event type. The filter graph manager then puts those events directly into the queue for the application to handle. Meaning, the application can tell the graph manager don't handle these events, I'll uh, just give them, to the, give them to me. Me is the application. This mechanism enables the filter graph manager to communicate with the application, filters to communicate with both the application and the filter graph manager, and the application to determine its degree of involvement in handling events retrieving events. The filter graph manager exposes three interfaces that support event notification. IE Media Event Sync contains the method for filters to post events. IE Media Event contains methods for applications to retrieve events. Uh, again, the filter graph manager exposes. We're talking now about the filter graph manager. So it has an iMedia event sync for posting events. It has a, an iMedia event for applications to retrieve. The iMedia event sync is a call, according to what it says here, is a callback mechanism seems to be a callback me mechanism, contains methods for filters to post events. iMedia Event Extended inherits from and extends the iMedia Event interface. Filters post event notifications by calling the iMedia Event Sync Notify. Right? The, f right? the, the graph manager implements the iMedia Event Sync, meaning I'm a sync. A sync means I respond to events. I can receive events. 
iMedia event is that it's just an interface call this interface if you want to learn if you want to actively receive something but call this to notify me it's different we'll, we'll get we'll, we'll see how it's different filters post event notifications by calling the iMedia event sync notify method on the filter graph manager an event notification consists of an event code which defines the type of event and two parameters that give additional information. Depending on the event code, the parameters might contain pointers, return codes, reference timers, or other information. For a complete list of event codes and parameters, see event notification codes. To retrieve an event from the queue, the application calls the get event, the iMedia event get event method on the filter graph manager. Right? We did something similar. In our example, we had an iMedia event interface extracted. This is an iMedia event, if I, right? This is an iMedia, and we asked the filter graph, please wait for completion. Don't return, block this function call until you've completed the, f the playback. So over here we have another method, and that's the get event method. On the filter graph manager, this method blocks until there is an event to return or until a specified time elapses. Assuming there is a queued event, the method returns with the event code and the two event parameters. After calling get event, an application should always call the free event params method to release any resources associated with the event parameters. For example, a parameter might be a BSTR, that's a com version of the string value that was allocated by the filter graph. Following code example provides an outline of how to retrieve events from the queue. So, so an application would invoke the filter graph managers queue would invoke, I'm sorry, the get event of the filter graph manager it would invoke it in a loop. It would try and get an event. If if um, the HR returns the return code, if it's a successful code, then good. We'll learn about the comma operator in a second. In that case, we'll switch on the event code returned, do whatever you want in accordance with the event return, and then release the event the events parameters and again call the get event test the value if it's successful that means we we got an event out if and we go into the block if it failed that means no more events and then you just break from the while to override the filter graph manager's default handling of an event Call the cancel default, ha default handling method with the event code as parameter. You can re and reinstate, that's not really important. The next topic, that's where I want to dive into an example. But before that, maybe we should try and somehow implement this in our code. All right, so that is what we're going to do in the next lecture. It's going to be actually a little bit intricate. We'll see the problems. It's really not a good solution. And then we'll go to the ultimate solution, which will give us actually two solutions. And we'll learn these and also, and, and also add this code. This is additional code on top of... The, fun the, the, the fundamental code of the get event. All right, so again, thank you for, for being with us. We'll stop here and we'll continue this in the next lecture. So thank you very much.